Hello everyone and welcome to my Keyblade tutorial. Uh, I've recently been inspired by the fantastic Blender community to start sharing a bit more and so I wanted to share some of my workflows with everyone and these I'm, I'm gonna start off with something a little simpler like this a few future tutorials I'd like to dive deeper and get into much more complex things. I also won't be hand-holding anything uh, for this tutorial. I'm gonna say everything I'm doing and talk about hotkeys and stuff, but I'm not gonna show you every element of the UI. You'll see everything and everything will be explained as we use it. Um, I feel like the Flip Normals guys do a great job on their YouTube channel, uh, do delivering all that really, really intro content. So please check that out and uh, plenty of other places on YouTube where you can find great intro content. This will be a beginner to intermediate series, but we're going to move fast uh, so we can get through it, guys. Um, also, I'm going to be using a few add-ons, which um, I'll try to use as minimally as possible. And when I use them, I will try to explain the standard Blender way of doing that thing first. But big shout out to Hard Ops, Box Cutter, all the mach machine add-ons. We'll be using machine tools. That one's free. Please donate to him for it. It's amazing. I consider it mandatory, but we'll be using all that stuff moving forward. So without further ado, and no more disclaimers, let's get going. Now I'm going to have this pure ref on my other monitor over here, just so you don't wonder what I'm looking at, but we will get some reference into the scene. And let's start off by doing that actually. So go ahead and hit X to delete the default cube. Let me bring up my folder. All I have here is a PNG with an orthographic view. Also, I'm going to use a uh, the alt middle mouse, I use control because I switched the key, but the swiping method of going into ortho views. Let's bring up this and let's just drop our PNG right in the viewport. And it's not gonna work, but it will the second time, makes no sense. Uh, go ahead and hit alt G to zero out the location of this. And let's hit R and we could just hit 180 here and it'll actually rotate it 180 degrees. Now, in your property editor, go to the uh, object data properties tab, which is context sensitive for a reference image. First thing is it's way too big. Let's make it one meter. That's about oh, not 13 easy there. And that's much more to scale. Let's do use alpha and you can immediately see it cleans up all this crud here, uh, on there. Um, and then we can, when, with that enabled, we can actually decrease the opacity of the image. Let's go to 0.5. Now, the other thing that's cool is we can spin it out into the perspective view and I can turn off display perspective. That way we're only seeing it in our orthographic views, which is gonna be super handy. Um, so let's, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and add a cylinder. So shift A, mesh, cylinder. And if we roll this up, it's 32 sided, that's great. Let's just hit S to scale it way down way down and we're just kind of trying to match the width of this reference image now we're gonna to have to move the reference image in the Y here move it over um, like that and then this can probably come down just another smidge something like that all right now that our reference image is where we want it we're gonna go up here in our uh, scene outliner and we're going to enable the selectability toggle and we're gonna make this image not selectable this way we can't accidentally select it in the viewport the other thing we're going to do is turn on our uh, auto smooth here. Uh, now you could go over here and turn it on and then shade smooth with tab or in my case tab in your case right click. We're not going to do that. Hit Z key machine tools shading pie. It's, it's a one stop shop for everything you need. So go ahead and hit smooth and Z again and turn on auto smooth and you'll see that it's fixed all of our shading. Now it defaults to 30 degrees. Once you've turned auto smooth on you can get to that here as well and you can play with that. Uh, angle threshold there, but we'll leave it at 30 for now. All right, so let's go back into front view and let's just start modeling this thing. Now I'm gonna hit Alt-Z to enable our X-ray here, and that'll let us select through to get that polygon. We'll hit G and then move it down in the, the Z, and let's grab this face, and we're gonna move it up in the Z. Let's move it all the way up to the top, something like that. Now what we need to do is add an edge loop in. So control R to bring up your edge loop tool. When you have that preview, click and drag to slide it up to the bottom there. And now we're going to, and then click again. And now Alt Z so we can see what we're doing. What we want now is the thickness of that key cutout. So let's get that by clicking here and then control clicking over here. That will be mighty nice. Now another thing let's do, let's go ahead and drag this down. And let's make this an image editor. And I wonder if I can just drag and drop it straight into there. I bet I can. Um, 
I'll have to find some of this was from my preparations here. Um, I'll have to find us a good one. Maybe we can just use this one for now. Yeah, that one would be fine. Let's just do this. And I don't know if we can rotate it, but we can at least zoom in on this handle and just take a look at that when we need to. Okay, let's set that up like that just so we can have an additional reference there. Um, all right, cool. So now that we've got our thickness on this, uh, on this <laughs> crown blade part here, hit E to extrude it out and we'll extrude it out to there. And now what we'll do to flatten this out because you can see that this is rounded here um, like that. So what we'll do is we'll use machine tools, hit Alt A in edit mode and it brings up your machine align tool and we'll just go left, it uses your camera. So now it's flattened these perfectly out to the left. If I undo that, you can see there it is again. Fantastic, it's a huge time saver. Let's hit Alt Z so we can see to our reference. And let's hit S Z to scale it just in the Z and taper it down like that. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make that crown. So let's go ahead and hide this by just hitting H uh, the other thing I might do is I might just start by hardening this up. So go ahead and uh, loop select that, select this edge, and control select that edge, and then we're going to go ahead and, sorry about that, control E, mark sharp. And now it's sharpened those edges along there, and it's bypassing the auto smooth. Great. All right, let's hit H to hide, go back into front view. Woo. And now what we'll do is we'll shift right click right here to add a circle right where the cursor is, because all objects are added in at the 3D cursor. Shift right click, we'll move it around. So right there in the middle, Shift A, mesh, and don't do curve circle, do mesh circle. And let's make it 24 verts. And now let's scale it way down. So S scale, like that, and S and scale. And now let's move it around and get it how we want it here. Um, something like that's probably really good. Yeah, like maybe like that. All right, cool. Then that's control A and reset rotation and scale. Now we'll go into vert mode and let's grab all the verts we don't need. So let's grab them all. These ones and then go ahead and hit X. I have the machine delete pie up or maybe this is just the extra pies delete. But either way, X will bring up a menu where you can delete verts. Now just simply grab a vert and there's a couple ways to do this. We can hit E to extrude the vert right click to drop it. Actually, let's not, let's bring it out. Or we can control right click and that will extrude the vert as well. Super handy stuff because you could just control right click and just keep just extruding that way. Um, in our case, we're gonna hit G and kind of position this a little more the way we want here, following that edge the best we can. And now we'll hit E this time because what we wanna do is middle mouse and start dragging up to constrain it in the perfectly flat Z. Oh, actually, we don't need to do that for this one. Sorry, guys. Uh, that's It's the cutter we're trying to make here. Derp. All right, so fun fact about this is what we can do is use the edge slide tool. So now I could just hit G and move it out. But if I wanted to get this perfect angle here, let's use edge slide tool. So hit G, G and then start to go back on itself a little bit and then hold Alt and you see that line, it gives you that implicit uh, vector of that edge, which is amazing. Maya and other apps, I wish that they had that. The Edge Slide tool in Blender is fantastic. So let's, okay, that's good. So now let's go ahead and shift, or I'm sorry, control right click over here to get that next extrusion and shift right click over here to get that extrusion. And we don't even need that extrusion, so let's delete that vert. We just needed to go right here to the middle. So let's get that right where we want it. Something like that. All right, perfect. So now let's go into object mode and see what we have. So we have this shape. Well, what's the next thing we need to do? Well, the next thing we need to do is add a mirror modifier. So let's go. I'm using, by the way, the link will be in the description to this add-on. It's free. It's fantastic. You can just go to GitHub and download it. It's called Modifier List. Uh, I highly recommend it. It doesn't give you this really hard to read modifier stack. It gives you um, just this panel and then all the properties for only one modifier at a time appear beneath it. It's actually in, it, crazy helpful. You'll see when you build up complicated stacks of like 20 modifiers, it gets very, very, very helpful. All right, first thing we need to do is we need to set the correct axis for that it should be mirrored in. So we're gonna set it in the Z. We could set it to bisect in the Z um, but that won't matter yet. So what we'll do is we'll turn off this modifier because 
the origin, if I move the cursor by Shift C, getting rid of that, the origin is here. So it's mirroring across this point. Well, we need this point to be over here. So to do that, let's select this single vert and then hit Shift S, cursor to selected. It's gonna, that won't matter. And then hit, uh, go into object mode and Shift S, origin to cursor. And let's just reset rotation and scale again to make sure. Now, when we re-enable our modifier, we're good because it's, it's going in the Z and it's properly mirroring across that point. Um, we don't need to bisect this model, but we can just to be sure. It'll, that means that when we fill it in, it'll run an edge in the middle. All right, so the next thing that we need to make sure we have on is clipping in the modifier. Uh, what that does is if, if I grab this vert and I start to move it down, whoops, let's extrude it down. You see that it can pass the midline. If I grab this and I turn on clipping and we extrude it downward, Dunk. see how it crashes right in the middle there and what it's going to do is it's going to weld these points too so this side of the, the model is real this side isn't we can't select it unless i turn this on then we can edit either side uh, but you'll see that it's getting welded across that point so super handy stuff so now uh, what we got to do is we just got to select this loop here and hit the f key and it's going to fill it with polygons fantastic right so let's go ahead and use another uh, use another modifier. My apologies there, I forgot the words. Let's also unhide our cylinder and let's also call the cylinder blade. And let's call the circle crown underscore cutter, something like that. Let's move the crown cutter this way out a bit and let's add a modifier, another modifier to it. It's going to be a solidify modifier. And you see that gives it thickness. So now what we can do is we can just pull that thickness out until it goes past our uh, you know, model there. Also, we need to machine tools, shade smooth, auto smooth, to get the uh, crown cutter shaded properly with its shading. All right, cool. So the next thing we're gonna do, now that we've got our simple little circle that's been mirrored and solidified, is we're going to make a cut with it. Now, really quickly, preferences, add-ons this comes packed with blender it's free so i'm not doing any voodoo magic here search for bool and bool tool now i have hard ops which is going to give me the same functionality as bool tool but it'll put it in a cutters collection too so i don't need to enable bool tool but you guys just turn this on and then all you got to do is select the crown select the blade control minus on the numpad and it will give you a difference operation and also change it to wireframe shading so now what we can do is we can hit simply hit the H key and we can hide that cutter and now it's out of the way. However, if I just to show you, this Boolean is still live. If I hit the G key, you can see this thing is still live. It has not been collapsed. Uh, if we select the keyblade blade, you can see it added a Boolean modifier with difference. So that's all still there. Just so we have something nicer to look at, let's put a material on this guy to get things started. So come on now. There we go. Let's go ahead and Go to materials panel here. Let's add a new material. Let's call it light metal, something like that. And now down here in the viewport display, it's really misleading. You'll wanna change it here, but you won't see anything in the viewport then. Go all the way down to there, viewport display. And now we can change things like the metallic parameter, the roughness we can put down to say 0.3. The, it's pretty bright, huh? <laughs> Um, maybe more roughness. Yeah, maybe a little bit more roughness. So it's not quite so dark. Let's just leave it up at a higher roughness just so it's not quite so dark there for us. But now it's gonna look a little bit more appealing while we work on it. Okay, so moving on to the next part, let's take a look at our reference image here and over here. And let's go ahead and hit Alt-Z so we can see through it. And let's not put in a lot of these details yet. Um, I'm hesitant to do that because this is like a toy. This image we're using here is a toy, whereas this is a lot more going on, which I'd prefer to do a little bit more detail. So let's hang tight on that for a minute and let's just go ahead and start blocking out this handle. So to block out this handle, we're just going to hit Alt-C to get our cursor back to the, to the center of the world. We're gonna drop in another cylinder. So Control-A, Mesh, Cylinder, 32, that's great. Hit S and just start scaling it down. And let's hit G and move it down in the Z. And we're going to try to drop it in somewhere here. And we're going to have to do 
two of these guys. So let's just try to find that width. So G, and you can you can see that that reference isn't matching up really great anymore down here, and because it's rotated slightly. So let's see if we can rotate that. Um, make our e empty. This is our uh, front ortho. I would normally be more organized than this, but I'm kind of trying to keep things moving here. So let's come down here and let's see if we can't just rotate this a little bit, if that helps it match up a little better. Maybe hold shift to really slow it down. Something like that. We can always undo that rotation later. Let's make that no longer selectable. Okay, grabbing our cylinder again. Let's bring it up to there. And all right, a couple things I noticed. We've been in right ortho this whole time because I was in right ortho when we originally dropped that image in. Also, my screencast keys is not working. There we go. It was on, but it got disabled, I think, when we saw that error when we dropped that reference image in. All right, so let's fix all this. Also, Alt-Z to take off X-ray. Let's uh, auto-smooth this guy, and let's go ahead and... Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw me make this material. I had to cut the video there. I, all I did was make a very basic material with a yellow viewport color and some roughness. No metallic. That's it. So what we could do is rotate everything, but watch this. As soon as I move this, what's happening here? Well, we need to parent this cutter to the thing. So let's unhide the cutter, crown cutter. Let's select it. Let's select the key blade itself. Uh, hit Control P and say set parent to object. Now you'll see this little relationship line going from the origin of this to the origin of that. You can see that dotted line right here. Um, and we can hide that by going into machine tools and turning off uh, by hitting Z there is what I have it mapped to relationship lines. Just so you guys know, again, machine tools I consider essential. Um, start to type in machine, machine tools. You can set under the key maps here, you can set these pies to be anything you want. So in my situation, Here's the shading pie, and that's the big one on the Z key. I just put it over my standard blender shading pie because it's everything and more that that would be. All right, so now that this is parented, we can move it. The crown cutter moves with it, but the crown cutter is a child and can also move on its own. So let's rehide that. Uh, whoops, F, or I'm sorry, H. And now let's grab both of these guys. In fact, let's grab the reference image as well because that's also, you can see, the wrong way there. And let's go ahead and hit R. Z to rotate around the Z, but you see already see the problem. It's rotating around kind of the sum of these origins. So what we want to do is hit Shift C. That puts our cursor back at zero zero, and then we're going to change our pivot point here to 3D cursor and with a global orientation. Now, if I start to rotate R Z now, you see it's rotating from that point. It's easier to see if you hit T and go to your rotate tool there, or in my case, hit spacebar and go to rotate there. You'll see that it, it's there versus uh, there. Okay. So we'll just do that. So if I start to rotate in the Z, you can hold control to snap it and drop it there. We didn't quite make it. I can start dragging, and if I hold control, it'll snap to 10, per, uh, 10 degree increments. Also, if I hold shift, it goes like really slow. So just know that there are those behaviors there for you as well. All right, super slick. Now, if we go into this view, we can see that even our uh, image rotated, that's great. The only uh, catch is we don't want to reset the rotation on the image. Is it still lined up? Alt-Z it is, because we rotated from the correct point. So let's deselect it. Let's make our image unselectable. And now we can hit A in object mode to select everything. And we need to clear this uh, rotation value on everything. So let's just grab everything, Control-A, rotation and scale. There was no scale, so it'll reset the rotation. And now we're back to zero on the rotation. Very cool. Different way. But before I forget, there's one quick thing I want to do to this. So this is just really flat and even. I want it to taper as well after having looked at some more of my references over here. Um, there's some cool stuff going on in some of these references, so we're going to get that in. Uh, let's just taper it. And the reason we need to do it now is because if you go into edit mode, you see that that Boolean cutter isn't being acknowledged. Um, the funny thing is we could actually Actually, I'm going to leave those edge loops so we can drop in an edge loop later. Um, but there's a number of ways that we can handle this. So first, let's do it the easy way. Uh, what we'll do here is we will grab, let's just do this. Let's grab all these faces, Alt-Z, grab all these faces there, and we'll hit 
Y. Now that'll just split for you. It brings up my mesh machine menu, but you'll see that it's also mapped to Y. So I'll hit it twice. You'll only have to hit it once. And now these have been split off. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll just simply, let's see how many more polys we want to go over on this thing. Um, probably two polys. Let's bring it all the way over. Um, if I'm looking at some of my reference, that's kind of what it looks like. So let's delete these polys, delete these polys, X, delete faces. And now we'll just simply grab, I think we have the right vert there. Yep, grab that vert. And oh, we need to take cursor off. So let's just switch that back to medium point. Uh, G, hold, I'm sorry, hold a control and we'll snap it right there. Now we'll come down, click a little on this side of it and you should get the right one and hold control snap. Same over here. I'm sure there's a better way. I could be using a mirror modifier here. Um, feel free to leave in the comments. Like I do this so I can learn too, guys. Like I, I'm not a blender master yet. It's not a second skin for me yet. Um, we're going to grab these edges, each of these ones we kind of left hanging because we want to preserve that cylindrical shape up at the top. Uh, let's see, let's go Alt Z so we can see through and grab that straight edge there, straight edge there. Now we have four edges. Let's hit uh, tab, right click in your case, tab in my case, uh, subdivide, I'll subdivide it twice. So now if we go into vertex mode, we've got some verts to play with. So let's go ahead and quickly hold control whoops, and snap them. And I'm sure, again, there's a better way to do all this stuff, so feel free to enlighten me. Um, I like to share what I know in hopes that everyone else will share what they know, too. Okay, snapping and snapping, snapping and snapping. Okay, cool. Now, Alt-Z to get out, and we'll just hit A, and you guessed it, merge by distance. Now, we've got a nice taper to this thing. It's going to be a little more interesting to look at when we come into here. It's going to look a little more deadly, I would say, a little heavier. All right, I got derailed. We're gonna go up there and do some detailing later and we'll just deal with it then. All right, moving forward. So let's go ahead and do this handle. Like I said, there's a couple ways we could do this. This is the way we're going to do it. I'm just gonna pull this face up out of my way. And one second. All right, so what we'll do here is instead of making this all one piece and extruding it off the thing like we did before, like where we grab faces and then we extrude, uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to use a different method because I don't want trouble with the bevel modifier later and I'm trying to keep this tutorial simple and short. So we will just like penetrate the polys in there and then just let it let it work because this this is has a lot of very hard transitions anyway. We don't need to get like a soft bevel transition between there so they don't need to be welded together. So to do this, what we're going to do is we do first need to decide how thick we want this blade. So let's definitely go at least as thick as we went on the top part or so. So let's grab like across, whoops, I'm gonna control click actually. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That ought to be good, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's do that. And let's just grab these single vertices. And in fact, we only need to grab one. And let's just go back into front view. And what's cool about Blender is I can hit Shift D and just duplicate a single vertex. And I'll right click to drop it. And then I'll hit G and then move it down in the Z a little bit. Pretty cool stuff. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hit G and move it in until it goes inside the mesh, you see? Now it's penetrating. So we'll hit you know, Alt-Z again to get our X-ray back on. And I'll just start extruding this vert. Pretty cool. Uh, Blender doesn't need for faces to be connected to things. Um, it, a single vertex can live without edges, faces, anything. Um, this is extremely handy and in my opinion, a big advantage over other programs that are really particular about geometry and don't play nicely with n-gons and things like that. Um, I think that's where Blender really shines for me personally. Don't worry about this. We'll get that knocked in. All right, still moving on. So we're just gonna we're gonna skip this gap. So uh, Shift D to duplicate that vert, and then Control D, or I'm sorry, Control right click to extrude that down somewhere like that. Not really sure where we're gonna want this yet. We can move it around later, of course. And then let's go ahead and extrude this up in with E and the Z, and then let's control right click over here, and then control right click up right about there, and then control right click right right there. Now what we'll do is we'll grab, we have this vert, let's grab that vert, Alt A machine, align to the left, now they're centered up and down, 
this and this angle came off pretty well, but we're going to grab that single vert, hit G, and just kind of move it, just to kind of kind of better represent the reference, even though we're about to change this design quite a bit. Um, we're not going to bevel this off yet because I actually like looking at this reference. I have various different references. Um, these are kind of like the the width of this right here is a little too straight for my liking. So um, what we're going to need to do, whoops, what we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to change it. So let's just move these out. So G, let's move them out and taper them out. I think that's a little more interesting to look at personally um, when it kind of comes more in this way. And in fact, we could probably do some of that here um, by moving this over just a little. No, that's not working too well. We'll just move these guys out. So something like that might might be nice. Um, although let's wait. Let's let's be smart. Sorry guys, it's early. Um, like I said, ZBrush all week. So let's put our cursor here. Shift right click, and now what we'll do is inside this object with uh, without going into object mode, we're going to hit Shift A, and we're going to add a circle again. And on the circle, we're going to make it 24 sides. Get yourselves used to using uh, multiples of eight. It makes things a lot easier when you can do it. Uh, 12 is okay, you know. 612, those are necessary in game art a lot of times, but 8, 16, 24, 32, those are your best bets. Now let's do something really slick here. Uh, we don't have an active element selected. Uh, if I deselect this vert and then reselect it, you'll see it's blue. Now your color will be white. I've changed it in the themes up here in the preferences themes to be blue so it stands out a little bit more and that way I know what my active element is. Now if I bring up my move tool so it's easier for you guys to understand what's going on, it's right now the pivot is at the median of our selection but we want it to be at the active element. The reason why is because now I can either grab this or I can hit G and start dragging and hold control and now that's where our snapping point is uh, as at the pivot there. And the other cool thing is if I go into my rotate tool so you can see it easier and we start rotating in this way, it's rotating around that point. So now I can rotate it and I can start to, let's let's drop it where it was, and I can start to rotate up and hold shift until this vertex right here starts to come in line. I'll zoom in and I'll hit R, and just R here since we can't grab the gizmo, and we'll get it roughly about on that line. So now what we can do is, well, first thing we should do is let's hit L and select that whole thing, shift D, drop it, go back to medium point, and scale it in a bit so we can have a perfect circle for our cutter in the middle here and uh, just have a nice duplicate and let's hit P and separate that off into its own item so we don't mess with it here. Now we'll go back in here, grab that vert, G, hold control to snap it there and let's delete all the verts we don't need, uh, delete vertices and now hit A and merge by distance, okay. So now our shape is merged see cool uh, and we have this circle in the middle that's all good to go now let's select both these objects grab all these verts and now let's move them off to the side before we start doing anything else so it's hard to see kind of because of the reference let me hide the ref uh, there we're, tr we're trying to look at this shape and see where how much taper we want to give it so let's push it out even a little bit more I'm kind of liking the look of that and I'm let's bring this one over whoops X Let's let's line it up with this one actually. Alt A and do that. No, maybe that's too extreme. I think it was fine where it was. All right, cool. Bringing the reference image back, um, whether we need it or not here. I'm gonna say that uh, we'll work on that cutter in a second. So let's see what we got. Um, this object. So first thing we'll do is we can start beveling off these verts. So let's grab this one and also let's connect these. So I don't think we the connect command will work when we don't have faces. No, J would normally do it. So let's E to extrude, then G, control, snap it there, and grab them both, merge, uh, merge by distance. See, it removed a vert. That means that this guy's all welded up now. Okay, so let's bevel this off. So we're going to hit, uh, I think it's control, shift, B, but you can right click to your context menu and bevel vertices. And we'll just mouse wheel up a few times and try to find that angle. Um, till we're liking that angle. Let's go one more time. We're gonna. This is a hero weapon uh, here, so we're gonna give it some nice smoothness. And we're using such. We're using the mid-res weighted normals uh, workflow here, guys. So this won't. This will be no problem. All right. Now let's go back up to this guy and remember the hotkey is Control Shift B. 
when we start to bevel it, you're going to notice something weird. Uh, it's not going the way we want. We probably could have extruded down and followed that shape, but I'm going to show you a better, cooler way to do it. Let's just use the profile. So let's sync the profile in. Let's take it to 0 0.05, and that's going to give us a nice shape to work with here. And now we can play with the offset. Whoa. We can play with the offset until we kind of like what it's doing. Um, and we're going to give it some more segments, eight segments. And we're going to say that, and the reason it's not matching up with this is because we tweaked this angle. And this, be this bevel here is relative to the angle, but we do want this profile because if we start getting crazy with the profile, it starts getting too sharp and whatnot. So we want 0 0.05 and that maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit further, meh, something like that. Probably right where we were before. All right, cool. So now we have the shape. So the cool thing is now we can just grab that whole loop and hit F and it's going to fill us a face, but it filled it backwards. So what we can do with this face selected, one single end gone selected is hit shift N. that didn't do it. So let's grab that face again and you can type, you can hit F3 and type flip, or you can come up here to, uh, let's see, mesh and normals and flip. It's under the alt N me menu. So let's use alt N flip. So I just showed you like all the ways to do the thing. All right. Now what's cool is we can uh, extrude this back. We can either extrude it back. It's going to be um, flipped again, <laughs> or we can use a command. I, I'll show you a new one. It's not going to really demonstrate it that great, but we can use instead of the solidify modifier, um, which we could use here, I guess we could use the solidify modifier, but I'll just show you what the solidify modifier is good for, or the, there's a destructive um, modifier, my mistake. So there's another way to extrude. It's not going to work that great here because uh, what it really shines at it right here, it just looks like a normal extrude. But if we delete this face and then we do it again, grab all the faces and solidify faces. And if we bring this down, you'll see it's good at like making shells and stuff. So just know that there's a destructive way to, um, without using the modifier here, but I'm going to undo and we will actually use the modifier because we can uh, get away with it here. So, oh, what we need to do though, this is all one object. So we want the origin right there. Perfect. Just grab this face, hit P, uh, split it off by selection. And now we have a, uh, its own object with the pivot right where we want it. So first things first, let's put a solidify on it and we may have to collapse it at some point, but we'll try it. We'll try it anyway. Solidify. It's going the right way. What we need to do here is just push it past this midpoint because we're going to lean on a mirror to take care of the rest for us past this midpoint right here. Also, let's grab our reference image. That's what that is and just move it way back and then lock it again. So it's out of the way. All right, let's auto smooth. And now we've, we're good with that. We've just pushed it past that midline uh, fill rim, not only rim because see that won't uh, that won't give us what we want. Even thickness doesn't do any, is, is good and our normals are good. So now let's put a mirror modifier on it. This will be the last time that I do a manual mirror modifier and a manual solidify. After this, I'm gonna use hard ops. I just want you guys to see like how much faster it is to do it the other ways. But let's do this one more time because we're gonna set up a two-way mirror or a three-way mirror here. So right out the hole, it's doing a good job for us because we don't have any scale and rotation. So it's, it's mirroring it in the X. Uh, this is great. Let's bisect it in the X. We don't need to flip it because we don't need it going the opposite way. It's going from positive to negative here. And now let's also mirror it in the Y. And we don't need to bisect it here unless we flip it. We could flip it, but um, what that's going to do is it's going to bisect it at the point which we actually do want. So let's go ahead and bisect it and flip it in the X, or I'm sorry, in the Y. All right, so now we're good to go. Uh, we don't need to you know, mirror it in the Z up and down. We just need the two axis there. So it's placed a, an edge at the middle. We also need to turn on clipping so we can't cross that mid that midline there, uh, which is what's happening here. This solidify is crossing over to this side. Um, if we turn off the mirror, you'll see. Um, so if we turn on the bisect, it fixes that for us. All right, cool. So let's have a little bit more fun here. Let's grab this circle that we left earlier. Let's move it out. Uh, for some reason, let's grab move and see what's, oh, I know why, because our, it, 
we need to bring the origin all the way down here. Uh, so hit Shift S, origin to geometry. It's going to put it right in the center, center of that circle. And now if we were to bring up our move tool, you see it's in the correct location. So we just want it off the surface just a tiny bit, just not sunken in, something like that. And then let's go into uh, edge mode here, whatever, and grab all the edges and hit F to fill a face there. Um, now I'm not sure with everything out of the way. Yeah, it's done it backwards. So again, Alt N, flip it. Okay, so now we can go back, Alt F, or I'm sorry, in my case, I'm using machine isolate, which is shift F for me. Uh, for you, that'll be local mode, which is numpad slash over here. See, similar behavior, but the machine focus is much more robust because you get multiple levels. All right, so let's uh, extrude this out. Let's just grab it, do a normal extrude, extrude it backwards in the Z. We can't really see how far we're going. We can finagle with this in a minute. Let's push it in just a little bit more. All right, now let's take a look at this again. You can see that the normals are uh, all messed up. So just hit A to grab them all. In this case, we're gonna hit Shift N to just recalculate them all and get them facing outward and that has fixed it. The other thing we need to do is we need to solve this, uh, we need to auto smooth it. So let's go auto smooth 30 degrees and now we're uh, good to go on that. Cool. So uh, let's make a Boolean, let's just cut it. So grab that, grab that, control minus on the numpad and we're off to the races. Now, instead of doing another Boolean add inside here, doing some craziness to get this, uh, just so you know, I'm looking at this detail because a lot of them just have holes uh, and little, you know, this kind of thing. That's really boring to me. I think I want to do something like this and then give it that silver color. So we're looking at this. We're just going to give it this little circular uh, bolt type of setup in there. So the way we'll do this is we'll just model out this Boolean cutter and we'll just use what we've already got. So Alt Z, grab that back dot, which is the back face, not the front face here, but the back face. And let's just inset it by hitting I and inset it just a little bit. And then now we'll hit I again. Maybe we'll scale it in just a hair more. And now I again, instead of extruding, we're gonna hit I and now without moving your mouse, you can just hold control and you can start to push it out. It gives you an extrusion. If I let go of uh, control, then it goes back into offset mode where we'll offset it down, something like that. And then we'll look at the thickness. That's looking pretty good. We might bring it just a little taller. And then now with the face still selected, we can simply just uh, bevel it with control B. And our profile's all messed up. That's okay. We can click and drop it and get into the dialog here where we can set our profile back to 0.5. And now we can start making this rounded off a little bit more by bringing, whoa, hold shift. If you start dragging it, this scale is too small, so you need to hold shift to really slow it down. Um, and the idea here is when I'm beveling and I want it to be really round, you want all these polys to be relatively a similar width um, there. So something like that is gonna be fine. And let's look at it. That's about the right number of segments too, even for a game model, looks good. So let's go back into object mode. Let's hit H to hide our cutter. And you can see we have that detail nicely modeled and everything's smoothing correctly. Um, we might actually, that looks a little deep to me, so let's bring the cutter back. It's our, uh, let's call this rivet cutter, something like that. And the cool thing is, is again, this is still live Boolean, so we can just move it, simply move it out a little bit in the Y. Something like that. And we can continue to play with that and fiddle later to our heart's content. But that detail is standing out a little bit more for me now. Um, honestly, to be honest with you, I might even scale that up a little bit. I think we're gonna scale this guy up. Do it in face mode so we don't put scale on the Boolean. And uh, let's just hit S, we wanna scale the whole thing. We don't wanna scale in any particular axis. So let's look, let's back it up and see. Yeah, that helps it a little bit. Now go into object mode before we move it. Um, and we'll just sink it in just a hair, whoops, G, Y, just a hair more. All right, that was fiddly. Cool, moving on. So let's start working on the bottom part here. So let's grab this cylinder. I could just copy the faces, but I'm gonna duplicate the whole cylinder and we'll just bring it straight down. Now, what I notice here in this reference that I like a lot, this is from DeviantArt. Um, this was not my work. Um, this is just a reference I'm using, uh, one of many. Somebody, uh, artist on DeviantArt, I'll have to put his name uh, shout out his name. But anyways, this is really skinny. This is really, really fat down here. 
So let's follow that. It just gives us some more meat to look at. Even in this reference, you can see this is much skinnier up here and this is much fatter. So let's try to do something like that. So with this one, we'll just go back into front and we're gonna kind of ignore our reference dimensions a little bit here. But what we will do is bring it down just over the top of where these guys penetrate, something like that. And it's just below down here, which is great. And now let's go into face mode and select all the faces. And let's go ahead and uh, S and then let's shift Z to bypass the Z and scale it only in the X and Y. So let's do that and let's come up like that much um, to where it's noticeably beefier. Um, maybe just a smidgen more. And actually what I'll do is I'll look at this and I'll scale it until it lines up with that edge right there. So we, well, I guess it doesn't matter the way we made this. That's probably good. Let's leave it right there. We've done this a different way, so um, we don't, we're not going to weld these in, so we don't really need to worry about that transition too much. Cool, and let's just start working on this handle area. Um, there's some fun tricks I want to show you about that. So to do that, let's just start extruding. Um, grab this top face, and let's extrude it up. And we'll get our first ring going here. Get it about the, the width that we want based on a number of references that we have here. And that's probably okay. And now let's go ahead and inset it, I, inset it down quite a bit, extrude it up a little bit, and then inset it again, way down, pretty far. And then now extrude, we're getting this part right here, probably went up a little high, um, eh, probably good where it was. And then let's inset it again, just a hair, and then extrude it up just a bit to where that's gonna penetrate. Now let's look at our reference. So this is way too skinny. Uh, we definitely want a handle like, you know, that kinda can do what it needs to do. Um, so to do this, let's hit Control plus on the numpad a few times and let's start widening this out. So S, Shift, Z, oh, sorry, S, Shift, Z, and then let's widen it out. Um, good amount here. And then let's go Control plus a few more times till we get that, S, Shift, Z, widen this out a bit more too. Um, well, yeah, S shift C, something like that is good. And then probably we could make this a little smaller too, control plus, and S shift Z, whoops, S shift Z to pull that out a little bit more. Now again, we, we're throwing some of this reference out. The handle can be a little skinnier on this one and it'll probably look pretty good that way. So now that we've done that, um, what we need to do is start beveling things, but let's just keep at what we're doing here for a minute while we have some momentum. Let's move this up, oh, we can't have those penetrating. We'll, uh, we'll fix that shortly. So let's move this up to like there, and now let's extrude this down about the same amount, maybe a little bigger, because it's the base, and we're good to go on that. So now what we can do is grab all these, uh, just those ones, and Alt-E, extrude along normals, push it out for these rings. Um, these rings stick out pretty good amount here. So you definitely want them to be noticeable and read, but we don't want them colliding with anything here. So that looks good. Um, now we'll have to go, so with machine tools, you can either go, so, uh, let's see, uh, select, select loops, select boundary loop, and then you could right click and add to quick favorites, or if you have machine tools, you can simply hit two with polygon selected, and that will give you your edge boundary. Um, and let's go ahead and bevel that off. So it's control B, let's bevel that, let's give it one less span, and see where that auto smooth is starting to catch? We'll just bring it, in fact, we need to get in closer. So control B, bevel it one less, and hold shift, and we want it to be right there. So what we want is the, the more even these polys are, the rounder this will be and the less square. Now our auto smooth is catching, so we need to bump it up to 45 degrees and that handles that. Okay, and now it's fairly round. It's pretty squared off down here actually. I should have, uh, let me back up real quick, sorry. I was trying to kill too, too many birds with one stone. Um, also, let's grab this face, control plus and edges. Uh, what was that command? Was it join, J, faces. Um, 
Is it fill? No. I can't remember. There's a command that'll just make this all one face. Um, I'll have to figure that one out later, guys. But for now, we could just delete the face. I can't remember what it's called. If I could remember it, what it would do is it would merge all those things into just one face. I need to f remember what that is. Then I can post it in the comments or something or just show it. I deleted that edge loop. Let's grab these two edge loops. It's bugging me now. I'll have to figure out what that command is. Leave me a comment if you know what I'm talking about, guys, because um, I've used that. It's just I haven't been in Blender much this week, and you know, that's all it takes to get rusty. Okay, something like that is good. And again, we need to change our auto smooth to 45, and that's looking much rounder. Uh, also, when we put weighted normals, this will all look nicer too. So let's grab these edge loops and control B to bevel. And something like that is great. And let's do it again here. Control B to bevel it. And this one, we will, yeah, we'll probably add an extra loop into this one because we're going to go down further. Um, let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks, that's reading the way. That, that Actually, that edge might be a little tighter. Um, we're getting fiddly here. I don't need to be this fiddly, but it's who I am. All right, cool. So something like that. That's looking good. Um, let's start back up here. Now, what I want to do is I kind of want the same width of all this on each side. So what I'll do to, to, to get that going here is uh, let's just copy. Let's hit Control Plus and let's Shift D and move it up. All right, we'll just rotate this guy in the X axis right here. So we're going to go R, X, uh, sorry, R, X, 180. And you can just type it in. And that'll give us this uh, kind of effect. And let's take a look at some of our reference here and see what's going on. I actually pulled up another image with Sora in it there. Um, it's pretty basic though in the game. Again, like they're they're skimping on the details just a little bit, so we could probably do better than that. So let's just bring this guy up and bring it all the way up and just sink it in. Figure out about how far we want that to come down. Now I'll Alt-Z. Uh, sorry, lag in there. Bring it down. I'm going to hit GG just to edge slide it down. You can do that. Um, you don't always have to uh, move, you know, things. So let's see. We need a little ring up here. So let's go ahead and go into edge mode on this guy and control R to drop an edge in something like that. Let's grab this face and G, push it up in the Z just like that much. See how fat these guys are down here. They're pretty fat. GZ up like that. And uh, now what we can do is grab this uh, ring here, this loop of edges, and Alt E, extrude along normals. Push it out like we've been doing, and go ahead and hit 2 for machine bound, uh, select edge loops, and go ahead and control B to bevel them. Scroll up a couple times, maybe something like this. Try to get them a little closer and nice and round. Something like that. You can see it's catching the auto smooth on this shape as well, so we'll auto smooth at 45 degrees. Now, what we can do, uh, let's go ahead and grab this shape and join it to this shape and hit Control J to do so. And now it inherits that origin and these polygons have been moved into that layer. Now there's something weird that happened here and I'm not sure what, but it's very weird. We can fix it. Don't know how it happened, but we're going to fix it right now. So let's bring our move gizmo up so you can see what's going on. With a global move, we're just going to simply hold here and then hold control to snap it there. And then we're going to hold Y to snap it out this way in the Y and the X. And then now we should be good to go. That makes me suspicious about what's going on down here, though. No idea how that happened, but it happened. Anyway, all right, moving on. Let's go ahead and... Uh, hit uh, control plus a couple of times, but let's go into vert mode and let's grab, let's just do this. This will be easy. Grab this poly and delete it. Uh, grab this edge loop here and grab one of these edges here and then alt A and align to top using machine tools. Now you can grab all of these, all of these and right click in your case and say bridge edge loops. Okay. And now we can grab this single poly control plus a couple times or not that many times, control plus to there, and then GZ, move it up in the Z to about where we had it. 
Now this edge loop right here isn't doing anything. See, it's not giving us any silhouette. So let's control X and dissolve that. All right, now we have something that's looking pretty good. Uh, the last thing let's do in this video, and then we're gonna wrap it up and we'll move on to the keychain next, which is gonna be really fun. We're gonna show you some cool techniques for the chain part of it, but let's knock out the handle really quick. Um, just to have something fun and then we'll come back and hook all this stuff up and the keychain and everything in the next video. So let's just drop in another cylinder right here. So shift A, add mesh in object mode and add a cylinder. Now this cylinder, we want to be very specific number of sides because we're trying to get this grid pattern here. So we're gonna use 16 sides and I'm gonna scale it way down because it's really big, we can't see it. And of course it got messed up because our cursor hit shift C to reset cursor and now we're back in business. So shift A, mesh, cylinder, that way we don't have to move it. It's already 16 and then S to scale it down, way down. And now G, Z, and we're gonna move it down. It's gonna be our handle. All right, so let's just kind of get this guy fleshed out. So S to scale it. Um, what we need to look at is how big around our cylinder here is. So let's hit S, scale it out just a bit like that. And then G, Z, we can move it up in the Z just a smidge. And then even a little bit closer, actually. Let's get it really close to that, just barely sticking in. And now go into face mode. Alt-Z so we can see what we're doing. Grab this bottom face, go ahead and delete that bottom face, grab the top, go ahead and hit G-Z and pull this up. And this is gonna go right inside there too. Okay, um, cool. All right, so now what we also need to do, or what we should do is just go ahead and auto smooth it. We'll just run a 30 on it. So we have a handle. Let's add a material. So go to the material panel, add one. Let's call it handle could be black handle, could be whatever you want. And let's go down to our viewport display and make it black, something like that. And maybe a little shinier, I'm not sure. Maybe not too shiny, we, everything else is pretty shiny. Let's leave it at that, cool. And then what we can even do is we can hover over this color panel, control C, and then control V to paste it into our base color so that when we go into our EV rendering mode, we'll see it there. We haven't done it for the other materials yet. Um, but we can do that later when we set up, start setting up our render. Anyway, so we have 16-sided cylinder. Now what we need to do is let's isolate it, machine isolate there. I'm going to go ahead and reset our origin, so shift S, uh, origin to geometry. Now it's right in the middle. And now let's add some edge loops. And what we're looking for is to make squares. So control R, scroll wheel up a bunch of times. And I'm looking closely and then right click to drop them right there. Now I'm looking closely to, to make sure that these are relatively square and they are at 24 cuts. So let's just leave it at that. Now what you can do is select all the polygons and right click and say poke faces. And it's gonna give you this, uh, an X. It's gonna poke a vertex right into every the middle of every single one of those. Now I learned this from Master Xeon 1001, the maker of hard ops and box cutter along with the rest of his team. Now what we can do is go uh, right click for the context menu, tries to quads. And look at that, it's a sweet trick that I learned from him. It reorients them into diamonds. So now we can just select them all. We ended up, we still have a cap on the top, my mistake. Let's uh, go into face mode and then hit C and then just click once to grab them all and then delete those. All right, so hit a, and now let's make sure we reset our scale or else it could mess us up here. So with them all selected, hit I, and then you'll notice up at the top, it tells us some more hotkeys we can hit. So hit I again, and that's gonna allow us to do an inset uh, individually by face. So I think you see where this is going already. Let's just get a nice little area like that. And now let's do inset again, but this time hold control to push them out and then let go of control to taper them a bit and maybe not out quite so far. Let's call it something like that. And now we have this pretty cool looking handle like you see here, um, pretty slick trick. Now we could go in and clean up some of the shading by um, pulling off all of these guys. Um, and in fact, while we have this selection, let's do that. So go ahead and hit, um, let's go ahead and duplicate this object. So hit Shift D to duplicate it, just in case. And let's grab the original one and then go back into face mode. And with the same selection we have, hit Control plus, 
And now we can hit Control I to invert the selection and delete all of those faces. All right, so now we can get out of here, go back out, and we'll go back and we will realize that we probably should have just duplicated that. Um, here, let me see which one I'm looking for. That one? Nope. Let's hide that guy. Let's look at this guy. Yeah, we could have uh, probably just done the cylinder before we, uh, my bad, before we hid the thing. Oh, well, that's fine. So now all we got to do is right here where, um, where the origin of this guy is, hit Shift S, cursor to selected, and then go ahead and add in, in object mode, another cylinder. <laughs> we should have just duplicated our cylinder, but I, want, I got so excited to show you guys that sweet trick. This can be 16 sides too, that won't matter. It'll be nice and smooth as it is. And now let's go into this view and let's scale it in. And then actually we can, let's shade it by 30 and then let's look at it. Let's get in here and just right when it starts to penetrate that bottom part right there. But we wanna get all the corners. So I was looking at this top corner here. See that one starts to hit later. There we go, something like that. And this, and let's go ahead and uh, over the material thing. And we don't need to hit new because we don't want to make a new one. We just want to add the handle material to this. So now uh, we can come out of there and then SZ and scale it just in the Z, something like that. Grab it and go into, um, sorry, I'm not talking well today, guys. I'm just doing here. And delete those faces. All right, cool. And now we have our handle. We could even join these if you want, but what I'm gonna do is just name this one handle underscore grip maybe, and then the other one I'm gonna call, I'm hitting F2 to rename just handle for now, something like that. You could join them, but let's just leave them separate in case we wanna do something different down there. All right, cool. So now we've got a really interesting thing starting to happen here uh, with our keyblade. We're gonna wrap up the details in this area and work on the keychain in the next video.